Hello, in this short video, I'd like to share with you my experience of using peer and self-assessment, my motivations for doing so, and my observations so far about what works and what we can do better. Many ideas I'll introduce come from this book, which I highly recommend, and from the literature. Assessment is a skill in its own right, related to but distinct from doing the work. And if you employ peer assessment, you're committed to teaching the students how to assess. My experience is that both the students and I have found this rewarding, and skills for assessing creative work help students far beyond the classroom. Rubrics are a common keystone for peer and self-assessment. With a rubric like the one that you see here, a student's grade is composed from ratings in several categories. Here, each row is a category, and each cell describes a particular performance level for that category. I've used rubrics for teaching design at Stanford for seven years, and rubrics really benefit from revision over multiple trials because it's difficult to write descriptions the first time around that are both clear and sufficiently broad without being trite or formulaic. It's important to have per assessment training in rubrics so that each assignment has its own rubric structure with assignment specific scales because assessing performance is new to students. Also, we often link the submissions that exemplify a particular cell from the rubric directly because examples can be extremely powerful. We collaborated with Coursera to create the first massive online class with peer assessment that I know of. And I'd like to share with you the particular system that we used and our experience with it in terms of results. Calibrated peer assessment is a technique whereby the first step of peer assessment is for students to practice using the rubric and grading materials with a couple of training assignments. They'll give a grade to that assignment and then get feedback from the system about how they performed. It can be as simple as flipping over a card that shows you graded X, the staff graded Y. And ideally it should include some rationale for the reason that the staff grade was what it was. In our system, once you graded an assignment close to the staff grade, you were released out to grade your peers. And if your grade was off, you got another pass through with a training example. In our system, all students were ultimately released into grading their peers. This is obviously a policy decision that you can make. The main piece of calibrated peer assessment has students grading five of their peers. And one of those five is a student assignment for which, unbeknownst to the grader, we have a staff grade already. And what that enabled us to do was to get one kind of ground truth about the quality of the student grades that we're seeing from peer assessment. So for scientific uh, purposes, this was extremely important. After they grade these randomly assigned five students, then each student assesses their own work. And I really like putting self-assessment at the end of a peer assessment pipeline because students are in an evaluative frame, which is a really different mental state than when they're completing the assignment. And so if you ask them to assess their own work when they're practiced up on evaluating their peers, that helps give them a new perspective on seeing their own work and hopefully conveys a better sense of why their, their performance is at the level that it is. This process has since been used uh, in more than a dozen other courses at several different universities through Coursera. I want to emphasize the importance of staff grades uh, as gathering a type of ground truth. And you need to do this for each assignment. It doesn't need to be a lot, just a couple is fine. Ideally, the first time you're teaching a class, it's useful for you to grade the assignments yourself as the instructor. However, you can augment this or even have it entirely handled by TAs or community TAs that you recruit from the previous iteration of the class. We found that the median peer grade correlates very strongly with staff grades. 60% of students in our simulation received grades that were within 10% of the staff assigned grade. So we thought that was a pretty good job for the first run, but felt that we could do better. And so in the second iteration of the HCI online class, we added 
just one bit of feedback for each student about whether they were grading high, low, or just right. And we found that this simple feedback improved students' subsequent accuracy. And so I think that, that giving students that feedback is really important. We also saw, both in the numerical data and in the course forums, that some of the rubric items were less clear than others. They generated higher ambiguity and a less strong signal. So what we did is we plotted the variation among reviewers and used that to help guide our efforts at improving the rubric subsequently. And indeed, the quality of the rubrics after improvement uh, went up in terms of the rater agreement. And all of the code that I'm going to talk about today, including this data-driven rubric code, is available on our website. For the past two iterations of the class, we've used the median score of 5 as the student score. And we compare that uh, peer assigned score to the score that students assign themselves. If they're close, the students get their own grade. And I think that pedagogically, putting students in the driver's seat is extremely important. That said, I've been a little bit nervous about rolling out uh, students assigning their own grades without any check at all. And so for these past two runs, we've decided that you get your own grade if you're within 5%, and otherwise you get the staff grade. And in fact, we use the, the max of the two to give the students the benefit of the doubt. The changes that we made in terms of using data to revise the rubrics and in terms of giving students feedback about their grading accuracy meant that in the second iteration of the class, the agreement between raters improved over the first iteration of the class. Notably, one thing that we saw is that students graded other peers from the same country about 7% higher than those from a different country. So the quantitative feedback is great as far as it goes. But for a topic like design, for a topic like human-computer interaction, it would be nice to be able to tell students more than just uh, you know, 87% or 95% or 63%. It would be nice because these uh, projects, the, the different assignments that students submit, build on each other, other over the course of the course. And so it would be nice to be able to tell students, well, here's what you could do better, or here's why your grade wasn't higher. And to do that, uh, we had an intern write out manually feedback for a number of different assignments. And we found that for nearly all of the assignments in my class, uh, for each rubric item, there are maybe a dozen different pieces of feedback that you can give that in their generic form, uh, one of those will apply to the vast majority of student submissions. And I expect that you'll find this in your own course also, that a small number of pieces of wisdom cover the vast majority of student er errors or ways for improvement. And so what we did is we created what we call fortune cookies, and we just put them as free text in the peer assessment system and encouraged students to copy and paste one of these text blocks into a qualitative feedback field, and ideally add a because reason. This provides a lightweight way for students to give each other qualitative feedback. Because we've written them, that also uh, eases the writing burden for non-native English speakers. And because we've thought of them, that serves as a brainstorming aid for students that otherwise might not be able to give peers feedback. And we found that the, about two-thirds of all submissions got at least one fortune cookie feedback. And, and nearly all of those had, uh, that got a fortune cookie included an explanation. And so I think that this is a really cool technique for scaling qualitative feedback that I encourage you to try. Another thing that I found really heartening is that in a post-course survey, one of the questions we asked students was, how much did you feel you learned from assessing others' work? And as you can see in the Likert scale here, students were extremely enthusiastic about the learning value of doing peer assessment. Assessing one's peers is a great technique for learning, for being able to articulate what's good, and also for seeing alternate strategies of solving the same problem. Students also reported getting a lot out of self-assessing their own work, uh, though the slope of the curve isn't quite as dramatic as peer assessment. Scaling peer assessment is still very much a work in progress. 
we've analyzed the data from two other classes at Stanford. And we found that with a different domain, with very different kinds of instructions, these classes saw very different results in terms of the agreement between peer grades and self grades. The HCI class was the only one of the three to offer per assignment training and peer per assignment rubrics. And we believe, though obviously we need to do a lot more research to, to say this uh, with greater certainty, but my hunch is that those two attributes are really important to seeing a high degree of agreement among peer, staff, and self grades. I also want to emphasize that to really analyze this data, you want to make sure to include those uh, ground truth examples that you sprinkle in among the peer assessments so that everybody grades one of them and you have a baseline to compare to. In that vein, I want to encourage any of you who try peer assessment to analyze your own data and share the results widely. We've made our code available as open source uh, at the URL that you see here. And if you're interested in collaborating with us and understanding this data or sharing your data with us, you can create a data transfer agreement. We'll work with you through your, uh, your IRB, your Human Subjects Board, so that you can share anonymized data with us and we can understand how peer assessment works better across a wider variety of domains. Going forward, for the next run of the class, we're going to use a technique developed by Chris Peach and colleagues for um, intelligently weighting different raters' grades differently. And Chris has found that that yields substantially higher convergence than uh, the median that we've been using so far. The median works pretty darn well, but intelligent re-rating can work a lot better. Also, over the coming years, one thing that's always served as an educational for model for me is the design studio and for all of the rich peer interactions that ha happen in that wonderful co-located space. And I think an important question for all of us is going forward, how can we make the online world such that it has different but equally rich hooks for peer engagement and critique and feedback and learning online? Thanks so much for your time. Feel free to go to this URL and contact us uh, if you'd like to learn more. Uh, best of luck in teaching your class.